Good day, if it's day where you're at, or good evening, if it's evening where you're at. Um, my name is Briggs, and I'm here to give a quick update on where be what have we been doing with the leaps and where we're moving forward with it. Uh, just today, we just released iLeap version 2.0, and uh, we're really excited about this release. Uh, before I give you a quick summary of what it does and what's going on, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, Johan Polichek. James Haben, uh, Kevin Pagano, um, John Hyla, and Heather Charpentier uh, for working with, you know, working together to get this uh, release out. Um, well, not the release, but the code out. So let me, let, let's, let's cut to the chase and let me show you what's going on. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And uh, let me see here. Uh, let's share the entire screen. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. We're gonna share here my screen, and as you can see here, it's the iLeap repository. So, if you're not familiar with iLeap, we have a series of videos on what the tool is and what it does. Big, I mean, quick summary: it parses different types of data, in this case, iOS extractions for items of interest. So now we have a uh, version uh, 2.0. So, if we look at the repository and we go and look at it and compare it, let's say with previous versions, you'll notice a few changes. The first one is this addition of the admin directory. And if you're not an active developer, don't worry about it. This is some pretty cool stuff that James is coming up with in regards to doing testing in a more efficient manner when you're developing scripts. And in the future, we'll address that. But the main thing I want to show you here is under scripts. You can, if you go to um, version, right, you can see a really nice 2.0 at the top. I know it's kind of small, but let's see if we can make it a bit larger here. Um, nice 2.0 here at the top okay so we're in version two so what does that mean well we we are trying um to push out uh artifacts that are in compliance with a new reporting system that we call lava and if i remember correctly it's uh, the leaps uh artifact viewer analyze analyzer or it's analyzer artifact viewer yes so that's what lava is and it's a new way that you will have to interact with your parse data. Um, the leaps right now, the reporting is in HTML, and I'm going to show you that right now. When you uh, finish a uh, parsing your data source, you will get a report here, which I apparently deleted. Let me see here. Let's open it. Let's open one here. There we go. So let me show you that. You get a report. There we go. This is the one, a report, okay? In HTML format. Um, one of the issues with HTML reporting is that if your data set is too big, it's gonna crash that browser. So now we're coming with a different format to be able to look at this, da this data that's not necessarily in the HTML. We're gonna be talking about it, James and myself, at the Cyber Social Hub uh, online conference in December 10th, if I'm not mistaken. And um, you know, be aware to our social media, the Digital Francis podcast now, um, a LinkedIn page for announcements on that, where uh, we, we plan on showing to the community what the, uh, how is it looking so far, okay? Um, before we go into the report, uh, I want to say quickly also that the version 2.0, we, don't ha we haven't built a release yet, but that's going to be forthcoming, okay? The reason for that is that we're still working on making artifacts compliant with the new Lava, you know, viewer system that we're developing as we as I speak. All right, so you got your report and that's fine and dandy. Some little details that we added to the HTML report is that under device details, you notice here at the bottom, it's better organized. We're going through all the different artifacts and making them compliant with this organization where you can see the artifact that created that uh, or pulled that information. You can see the actual data, for example, iOS version and the source from where did it actually came from. So you, you can go and find the script that, uh, Pull that data and you can follow up on the process. So I think it's pretty good. As you can see here, we haven't um, changed them all yet, but we're working on it, right? And the rest pretty much stays the same. Your script run log and your files have been processed. Notice that it's a really better organized. Now, this is not the main thing. The main thing is, and I'm gonna show you now, is how we change the report uh, directory and to make it Lava compliant. So let me show you a report here on the inside so you can see it here. And the first thing you will see is that it's 
less stuff. <laughs> Everything is there, but it's more it's better organized. Um, the first thing is that you'll see an index.html here at the root. You press that to open your report instead of having to hunt it down among other HTML files. The HTML files or the reports for each artifact are going to be contained in the HTML directory here at the top. And your SQLite timeline under timeline and your TSV, you know, task separated value exports under the corresponding directory. That pretty much stays the same. But the HTML, now we have an HTML report, I'm sorry, directory that keeps those reports there. Okay. The data folder is what the temp folder used to be. So you will have here all the data that you pulled out in hierarchical structure, right? Folder to folder. So you can follow up on the source data as extracted from either of uh, your zip file, tar file, or whatever your data source is. Now here's the big thing, the big change is you'll see a SQL-like database called Lava Artifacts and a JSON file file called Lava Data. So I'm just gonna show you that. And as a regular user, that's not gonna really make any difference in your life, at least not yet. But for Lava, which is our, our new viewer that we're developing, that's important. So I'm gonna open it to show you what's in it. You can see here that as we process the data, we're creating a table for each uh, module that processes the data, and it contains the data in store within the SQLite database. This is important because it allows us, I mean, look, allows us to have the data source in this type of structure that then we can uh, provide it to the, to the um, new viewer that we're developing. And like I said, um, oh, let me get this down here. There we go. Uh, the viewer is really important because it allows us, I keep opening the wrong window. It allows us to not be constrained by the HTML itself. What I foresee, and we'll talk about that way in more detail in um, in December during the uh, Cyber Social uh, Hub uh, conference, is that I foresee HTML eventually going by the wayside as the main viewer, and then have Lava present you with different ways of exploring the data uh, from it. So um, we also plan on possibly, um, well, not possibly, we plan to do at some point, uh, you can also tag items within Lava, and then you can create a tax item report, something that folks have been asking for for a long time, and, and continue to develop the tool, right? So pretty much that's the, the, big, uh, the big change that we have is you will see these databases uh, being shown in a leap and our leap as we port this data over to other the other leaps. You see a cleaner, as you can see here, a reporting structure. You see that JSON, and actually let me show you the JSON just, just to show it, but uh, the JSON here is information, again, about the artifacts themselves that have been parsed and how many records they have and what are the different uh, headers or for those columns that contain the data. So, And we use that within Lava to present the data to you in a different way and in a way that doesn't crash the browser because there's no browser to be crashed, <laughs> all right? So again, we're really excited. Um, I'll talk with the group, see if uh, they might have another video soon. Uh, oh, well, one last thing. Um, we're still updating modules within the leaps to make it uh, compatible with the Lava uh, format here, data structure. And that will be going for the next, you know, as long as it takes to get it all, all there. So, well, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, thank you everybody for your time. Again, just uh, keep using the tools. Uh, oh, and if you're a developer that sent uh, artifacts or modules, made modules, there's some little changes and I'm gonna be coming up with a video for developers pretty soon on how to create your artifact for the leaps and making it uh, Lava compliant. So that output, Lava is able to digest it. It's super, super easy to do. It's, it's, it's some minimal changes and actually makes the change that we made make it really uh, easy to, to do and to review. Actually, you know what? I was about to sign off, but let me do one little one little more thing. Um, let me show you here an artifact real quick, just to kind of whet your appetite. <laughs> uh, let me let me use the uh, which one can we use? Um, so what happens when I riff off script? Let's look for account. Let's, let's do account config. Maybe let's try that one. All right, so look at the well, first thing you will notice is that we have a really clear 
header structure that tells you what the artifact's about, okay? With the paths, and you can see different output types to include a lava output type. And for those are developers, we're gonna use a decorator here and then make sure that we return the data as such. And again, if you're not a developer, don't sweat it. I'm gonna make a, a video with, uh, with details. Let me close this out. With details on how this works. And it will be super, super easy to take old artifacts and making lava compliant or making new ones and make sure they're lava compliant. Now I'm done. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, please uh, comment. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, well, also subscribe, but leave questions in our social media pages. And really good stuff's coming from the leaps. So uh, keep in touch. Thank you and have a good day or night. <laughs>